Hi, my name's Charles Harrowell and I'm going to be speaking about objects and inquiry. This is a box for exam papers from 1840, used for the second and final exam in the Bachelor of Medicine. We're going to use the box as a starting point to look at the activity of the university at that time and to examine what shape a medical degree took in the mid-19th century. The university was founded in 1836 and until 1858, exams were its sole stock in trade. Teaching for medicine was carried out at St. Bart's or St. Thomas's, both of which were founded in the 12th century. Exams were about to become a mania, with the notion that the same questions given in the same conditions could result in objective results. The university was onto something, but it wasn't quite happening yet. In 1840, the expenses of the university were around £5,500, of which £3,500 went to the examiners, many of whom sat in the Senate. The income from exam fees was just £405. Centrally funded by the government, the Treasury was understandably exercised by this situation. They made calls for examiner fees to be reduced, but the Senate unsurprisingly voted against this, saying it was against the terms of the university charter. The Treasury did manage to get the examiners to account for their time, albeit begrudgingly. Some, like Charles Lowcock, who marked the exam papers in this box, charged £250 for 27 hours' work, whilst others worked 135 hours for the same money. The Treasury announced a funding cut of £800 in the following year, but noted sweetly that it was up to the Senate to decide where the Act should fall. Jonathan Mason Waddy, Thomas O'Meara and John Douglas Strong were amongst the 20 candidates who took this exam. They each paid a £5 entrance fee. At that time, the total cost of a Bachelor of Medicine was £20 and the same sum was required to become a doctor. Fifteen candidates passed in the first division and were entitled to enter the honours exam a week later. Only Amir and Strong did this, and for their trouble, they won prizes. Incidentally, the prize and scholarship fund for the university was 50% greater than its income from fees. All passing candidates could now practice medicine, and 1840 was the first year that the University of London could grant those rights on the same basis as Oxford and Cambridge. One, two or three years more study was needed to gain the title of Doctor of Medicine. And of the 20, only Jonathan Mason Waddy achieved this. Well, I found out the above by using the university archives. And I could have read those without the box. But it's the box that led me to inquire in the way that I did. And that's one reason for keeping objects in archival collections. Objects make us think of different approaches to research than written sources, and they provide a kind of instant focus that can be hard to find in written files.